David Novak at, what's his channel called? Uh, the, anyway, David Novak Reads Poetry is his channel, although he does a lot more than just poetry. He's got a great channel. I really enjoyed his video of this tag, and he was nice enough to tag me. That is the This or That book tag, which is part of the People April event, which I'm participating in, and many other people are too. It seems to be a very popular event. Uh, both the tag and the, the tag is created by the same people who host the event, two wonderful booktubers, that's Roz and Elizabeth, and I'll put all that information in here. Now, um, let me get down to the uh, tags, there's 12 questions. Okay, these are all related to uh, the event, People in April, which is about reading nonfiction about people, it's could be a biography, um, collections of letters, any way you want to interpret it, um, diaries. And kind of, I do want to say from at the beginning, kind of like David mentioned in his video, I don't read a lot of nonfiction. I don't read a lot that fits this category. So bear that in mind as I answer these questions. But I have had a chance to think about them. Anyway, number one, big, fat, and detailed biographies or short and succinct biographies. Definitely short and succinct. Um, a lot of times I'll read a biography in those kind of series that come up every so often, you know, so where some uh, publisher will put out a, you know, concise biography of Abraham Lincoln or whoever it is or various people. Um, you know, I think there's uh, Bill Bill Bryson wrote uh, one about Shakespeare, which is very short and and which was fun to read. So I, I definitely like the the short ones. I feel like I get a lot of bang for my buck. You know, frankly, I'm very there's a lot of long biographies, multi-volume biographies, like including the one of Lyndon Johnson, which I've mentioned before, that I've really always wanted to get to. And as soon as I find a short one on somebody. I gravitate right to it. So, one thing about biographies is when I open them up and it starts in the childhood, and I'm like, oh my God, how long is it going to take me to get through this thing? I really don't like reading about people's childhoods, which probably puts me off a lot of biographies. They're getting smarter on these. I've noticed they, they'll start, the first chapter will be the, the height of the person, like them, they'll go back to their childhood. And I like ones that start in adulthood. So, the more concise ones, the better. Two, celebrity memoirs or average Joe memoirs. I can't think of an average Joe memoir that I've happened to read and enjoy. When I was working at, um, I had a job working for a big company that posts used books to sell online. Um, it's not Amazon, but anyway, it's a, it's a seller that lists books on Amazon, and we'd see these things come in, and I would just... Um, see these memoirs come in that people had obviously printed out for, you know, self-published or whatever, and with titles like One Boy's Memories of Childhood in Puyallup in the 1950s or that kind of thing. And it's like, I think everybody has thinks that they have a book in them, but I'm pretty shallow, and so if it's a celebrity memoir about the, I think I've even... Probably the last two. Um, well, I read that that Patrick Stewart biography, and that's kind of more th towards the time, kind of thing I would gravitate towards. Do you like some cheap, quick, quickie celebrity memoir or something like that? I can't really think of an average Joe memoir that I've ever read, even. So maybe there are some. As soon as I turn this off, I'll think of one. Number three: complete correspondence or selected letters. Now, I'd also seen uh, S Steve Donahue's uh, version of this tag where he makes the point that, you know, you're not really reading anybody's complete correspondence. So I'll, you know, because there's, you know, going to be bills in there and things like that, and very unlikely that um, you're going to really want to read somebody's complete correspondence unless they're a very, very uh, storied figure. Um, there was a book once, though, that I got. There was a book by 
Adolfo Bioy Casares, who I've talked about it before on this channel, who wrote a book called Borges. And Borges, of course, the short story writer, the greatest uh, Ar Argentinian short story writer and close friend of uh, Bioy's. And the book was called Borges, and I, and I, and it was in Spanish, and I would, my Spanish was pretty weak at that time, but I still wanted to read it. Now, every book I'd ever seen by Bioy Casares, including the one I did a, a video on earlier, Invention Morel, is like that thick. So this is back when I was living in Seattle. I put it on hold the library. I go to pick up my hold. I go to see this book called Borges, which I figure is just like a nice memoir of about. Uh, Jorge Luis Borges by his best friend and I go to pick it up and there's this book that I'm not kidding was like that thick it's the thickest book I've ever seen in my life except for like an Oxford English you know an Oxford full dictionary that sits on a stand or something it was so big that when I went to uh, return it later it would not fit in the night slot I had to wait till uh, daytime to return it I didn't read it I read a few pages it is insane, this book. And it's probably the most complete, and I guess that's what you would call a complete memoir, because what it is, it's every excerpt from Bioy's diary in which he mentions the name Borges, of his friend Borges. So it'll be like, you know, July 14th, 1940, Borges for dinner. You know, July 15th, 1940, Borges comes to dinner. Just literally nothing, just nothing, just every, it's just like uh, surreal. So um, I would definitely not want to read anything like that again. Um, the thing with uh, completes and um, versus selected, you know, it's really who's doing the selecting. Uh, number four. Memoirs written when the events are fresh or memoirs written with hindsight. I think hindsight. I can't, again, I can't, since I don't read so many, I can't think of any that are fresh. I think hindsight is always better. So many things I wish I'd waited to talk about. Um... Number five, gossipy biographies or scholarly biographies. Um, I have this big biography. I believe it's considered a scholarly biography, which I haven't read, which is a, which is a biography of H.P. Lovecraft by S.T. Joshi. And I don't think it's his only biography of Lovecraft. Obviously, it's not his only book about Lovecraft. There's probably like a million of them that he wrote. Um... But I believe he wrote it as meant to, meant it to be an exhaustive biography, like everything known about H.P. Uh, Lovecraft, you know, for other scholars to read and things like that. Um, that's the only thing I can think of as a scholarly biography. I don't believe I've ever read one. I, I don't believe I read much scholarly stuff at all. I read mostly popular stuff, so gossipy, I think, would be better. Um, not too gossipy, though. You know, some are just hit jobs. I read uh, a very mean biography of Patricia Highsmith recently. And there again, I picked the shorter one. There were, there's, a, there's a few biographies of Patricia Highsmith out there. There's one really thick one. And there was also another one that's just basically saying, here's all the terrible things she did. And that was the point of the smaller biography, was just to write all about her, Ad, you know, hor her admitted horrible anti-Semitism and, you know, discussing parts of, of, of her, some terrible things she said and did to people in her life. Um... So it's, I would say it's definitely gossiping. The person who wrote it really wanted people just to dislike her intently and doesn't really care for her as a writer. So it was really, um, even though there was nothing false in it and all that kind of stuff that's in it could be found in the bigger biographies of her, I would say it was written just to be gossipy. And those are kind of annoying. I know that it used to be kind of a whole big thing, Kitty Kelly and 
his guy, what was his name, Goldman, I remember a bunch of my friends were this John, John Lennon biography once, and you know, they were constantly, anytime you'd mention John Lennon after that, after they'd read that Goldman biography, it was like, yeah, you know he killed two people, right? It's like, no, I know in that, I know in that biography, he's, she blames, he, Goldman blames him for killing two people. There are some very mean-spirited biographies out there because they just wanted to sell books. It used to be a really big category, I think. I don't know if it is anymore, that kind of celebrity biography, but gossipy in general. Um, I used to read, for, for a while I went through a little phase of, a, when I was younger, when I was reading a lot of true crime and a lot of looking for a lot, a lot of different weird kind of junky uh, categories of books to read. I read a lot of the trashiest celebrity bloggers I could find. I read one called, not Elvis and Me, which is Priscilla's biography, but a book called Priscilla, Elvis and Me, which was by a guy that Pris Priscilla Presley was married to, or at least lived with, after she divorced Elvis Presley. You know, just a total bottom feeder of a, of a creep, you know, wannabe actor guy who uh, uh, then wannabe screenwriter guy and just who was married to um, Pr Priscilla Presley or involved with her for a while and then just wrote this really uh, stupid tell-all memoir about her. Um, but at the time I thought that kind of stuff was really funny. Um, it just, you know, just garbage that you know, if you reach a certain level of, of celebrity, you can get a book published, and he got a book published, so good for him. Um, okay, so number six, <clears throat> diaries of ordinary life or diaries of extraordinary events? Well, I just finished for this same challenge, the book, and I have a review of it going up tomorrow, I believe, of Adventures of a uh, American Girl in Victorian London, where she uh, goes undercover as a journalist to write about what it's like to work as a domestic. And I'm trying to pause this so I can cough. You know, and I would call that a diary of ordinary life, sort of. I mean, it's a memoir. She wrote it not as a diary, but. Diaries of Extraordinary Events, what would that be? I guess that would be like um, the letter that hmm hmm, I guess that would be like what am I trying to say? Uh, Hiroshima by John Hershey, that would be a diary of an extraordinary event, right? He was a um Wait, is that the book? I'm, am I thinking of the right book? What's the What's the memoir about the guy who's in? Who's a? He was. Uh, I probably got. It. I think I got something confused. I think I'm getting confused with Zen and the Art of Archery. Wasn't there a German person who wrote a book who happened to be in Japan during World War II when the bomb hit on Hiroshima, or was? Well, I'm probably forgetting it. It was, it was drawn her. John Hershey wasn't in Hiroshima when it was bombed, was it? He was just he was just reporting on it. Boy, I wish I could cut this part out, but I'm not starting over. Anyway, so I, I okay, Diary of Extraordinary Events, I suppose that would be the Diary of Anne Frank. You know, a very extraordinary life, very tragic life, although it was probably written in terms of it being ordinary because she was just writing about her current life at the time. So I don't know how to answer this question. Anyway, seven, arty memoirs or sporting memoirs? I don't know if I've read a sporting memoir, meaning a memoir of a sports figure, I think. I've read a lot about artsy people. You know, one of the books I read, uh, Stanislavski, Stanislavski's uh, biography, and I read, uh, that's pretty arty. Um, I don't know, I guess arty people over sporty people I guess, or or do they mean like um, memoirs of the sporting life, like uh, like like that famous book about um, fishing? I'm getting over cold, people. Don't blame me. 
Okay, gritty autobiographical writing or inspirational autobiographical writing. Well, I can't imagine me sitting through an inspirational autobiography. Uh, sometimes things are inspiring that when they sneak up on you. Um, probably, you know, a lot of people these days, somehow, I don't know how this happened, but Bukowski became... Somehow, after his death, some in the last few years, starting with that Mark Manson book, that crap uh, about the, the fine art of, of, of selling bullshit and package, the fine art of repackaging old bullshit and selling it as, as new wisdom. Um, what's that? What's that book? Oh, the subtle art of not giving a fuck. That's what I mean. Anyway, <clears throat> where he talks about. Bukowski and I saw another person recently on Twitter try and rip the whole thing off and act like he had. So somehow, but anyway, and there are some very beautifully inspirational Charles Bukowski poems. Uh, obviously, that was not his persona when he was alive. You would call him a gritty autobiographical writer because his books are very clearly meant to be autobiographical. I mean, he uses himself as his main character. He has... And, you know, they're obviously more on the gritty side. And I obviously need to stop saying obviously every two minutes. So I'm going to go with gritty. But, okay, nine. Biographies of historical figures or biographies of contemporary figures. Historical. Always go with historical. Always go with something that's been around 100 years. There's more of a chance that it's going to still be interesting in 100 years from now. Instead of what's going on today. All the time. So today we see it all the time this is the worst time in american history everything is worse than it's ever been every president's the worst president we've ever had every election is the most important election and go back a hundred years and see what people thought about then you know what, what was in the newspaper versus to versus what people are still talking about those times today historical trump's contemporary Stood the test of time. We don't know what today is going to st stand the test of time. Ten. Memoirs of happy days or memoirs of tragic days. Again, one boy's childhood in Puyallup. No. Uh, memoirs of tragic days, I would think. You know, it makes the best stories. In fact, one of the best things you can do in your life is when things are horrible, you can laugh about it and say, well, this will make a good story someday. You know, that's sometimes all you can say. Bonus prompt from Elizabeth is number 11. The Complete Diary of Samuel Pepys, over 4,000 pages or 116 hours and 16 minutes of audiobook, or Selections from the Diary of Samuel Pepys, which can be as short as 120 pages or 3 hours and 55 minutes of audiobook. <clears throat> I think, uh, based on my other answers, you can guess on this, I'm going to say the short one. Uh... Definitely have a caveat, and this is an example of exactly what I'm talking about. You know, really, de really does depend on who's doing the, the, um, the abridgment, abridgments, because you know the, the ones that came out, I would imagine. Let's say the the abridged Samuel Pepys diary, that would have come out in 1950, is going to leave a lot of stuff out that, the. Uh, one done today in 2024 is going to definitely focus on and I mean like all the sexual stuff that he has in there which people you know who do the uh, abridgment today are like you know this what people want we gotta see this where, where people uh, in the 50s or some other time would have covered up uh, so For a while, I don't know if they stopped doing it or if I just stopped following it. On Twitter, used to do the Peeps Diary, you know, each day. Now it's not. We don't, we're not really on the same calendar exactly as they were on in the time of Peeps. Um, so there's some mismatches and stuff. But it's like you know, whatever his August sixteenth, you know, it starts off. I think he kept it for ten years. Does it say here? I think Peeps kept his diary for ten years. He was a you know, for people who don't know, he was a businessman in uh, London in whatever the age right after the Elizabethan age is, you know, something like that. <clears throat> and he wrote a diary, and as Steve Donahue pointed out on his channel, like many, many of the entries are like, you know, 
came home late, uh, drank two pints, you know, did some work on my uh, on my contracts, and, and went to bed. And so to bed. That's always a joke on, you know, how he'll end a lot of his categories. He'll go through what he did during the day. You know, met so and so, and talked about my ships uh, at such and such a tavern, uh, walked home, and so to bed. Um, but uh, what I was saying was I had, so they used to have this Twitter page and probably a couple of people are doing it that would do the, the the day by day entries so it's like whatever year would correspond like so you open on April 4th and it's whatever his entry for April 4th was and the 5th and whatever and it was fun to read like that even though most of them are meaningless um, very interesting writing though I really do kind of enjoy Peeps but just in very small doses so I've never really sat down and read him other than those tweets then you'll come into one it's like oh my my wife hired a new maid and I can't stop thinking about her you know end of tweet and you're like what the fuck and he, so um, he's a complicated guy you know he wrote that diary definitely for himself and the things that he would wanted to keep track of and he and he did that and now we have it for some reason I really don't know that much about the background of it anyway so tag some others I don't know if I'm going to end up tagging others I've done a lot of videos today um, I don't know I've, there's a lot of uh, good people been tagged in here so far I I don't know who um, is on here that I can that I can tag who reads a lot of nonfiction, but I'll see how I come up with. Anyway, I'm going to cut this off right now because I've finished the tag. Thank you so much to Elizabeth and Roz for making this tag and for making the 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 uh, the entire event that this is that they're sponsoring along with this. I think it's a, a great one. I I got a lot of enjoy out of, a lot of joy out of it and have a lot of enjoyment of watching other people and seeing what they're doing with it take care